Hey folks, how you doing? It is Clay Francisco again here today um, with another book review. I am still reading Jim Butcher's Codex of Alara series. Um, I'm still really liking it. I uh, just got done with book two. Not as much the one, yeah, I don't like it as much as the first one. And here's why. It came out in 2005. Um, and so I'd have to go back and research the timelines of Harry Potter and when all this stuff came out and, and that jazz and, and, uh, where this fell into the, you know, chronology of all that stuff. But, um, I am not into the, uh, anime trope of the student in magic school, right? I'm sure if you guys are watching this channel and watching these videos, you are very familiar with, you know... My Hero Academia, and all those, you know, yeah. <laughs> Little Witch Academy, and all the, you know what I mean? Like, they got all that stuff. No, I'm not into that. And so, book this book, too, has a lot of that. Um, Tavi completes his story arc for book one, and at the end, the king gives him a... Um, becomes his patron and sends him off to that school where even the non-Fury users can make something of themselves, right? It's all Tavi ever wanted to do. The king says, here you go, right? Um, no, of course, that comes with strings attached. But that's the main plot of the book is introduce new characters, um, get uh, establish um, that people who were enemies are no longer enemies, right? And that we're going to do again. And this is where I'm kind of like, eh, maybe not so much. He definitely follows. And I don't know if this comes from the fact that he's just doing a Pokemon thing. Um, but he again follows the anime trope where every enemy he defeats becomes a new party member. Um, and so like, if you've watched any of those really bad animes, like, uh, Oh my gosh, like Seven Deadly Sins and like Fairy Tale and, and a few of those others, right? That's like what they do, right? You, you beat a bad guy and you, you get, you know, it, as you're defeating him, you, you uh, get into his inner self and his angst and why they really are that bad guy. And then by relating to them and then choosing to defeat them honorably, you can then show them a new way of living. And then they are completely blown away, flabbergasted by the um, character, right, of your main character. And they switch sides. They're instantly won over. Well, not instantly, but, you know, they're won over and... Yeah, it's a great trope and all, but no, not so much. So, that's the thing I don't really like so much about it. But, I'm on to book three already, and so I'm not going to talk anything about that. But, I do like where he's going with the series, right? Um, the, the, the Vord, um, the, the guys with the Croach, and who do, uh, that's a pretty cool concept. Um, they, they disappear in book three, which kind of gets me like, eh, but then I talk to my buddy and he says they reappear again. So I'm liking that, right? I feel like kind of in the transition from book two to three, he sort of dropped, um, the Vord storyline and he's going for the, 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 the wolf folks, the Kanes, uh, can't remember the wolf people, the ones that, um, vulgar. Yeah. Anyway, the wolf people are awesome. They're doing a really good job with that. They're doing a great job of throwing them, showing them a rot, the wolf folks and the Kane and um, the, the Alarans, the humans. Um, great job with them having very different um, and yet still relatable cultures. Uh, it, it, yeah, I just really like how Jim Butcher's broken them apart. Um, really fun stuff. Each one has, you know, their own trials and tribulations, or rather their highs and low points of culture. No one culture is, you know, the main culture. Um, they, they each have their own downfalls. You know, the, the big thing with the Alarans that's their downfall is they condone slavery, right? Whereas the other two races, they, they aren't about that at all. Um, and then, of course, then there's the Vord, 
who are an interesting mix of um, zombie and um, like alien style, like, you know, um, hive mind aliens, like the Zerg or something like that, right? Um, and so I, I, I like them. I, I like how he's done a bit of it. And in uh, book three, he makes some of these Vord queens. Um, he talks about them. He talks to them. You know, Tavi talks to them. It, uh, it brings a little bit more in and out for the Vord culture a little bit um, as you start. So I'm, I'm liking where he's going with this. Uh, it feels a little bit different than book one so far between book two, which is what I'm technically talking about, and then book three, which I'm into right now. Um, seems like he's changed a few things here and there, but overall, um, since I got through book two and I'm on to book three, he's out of school, right? He's on to doing his thing. Um, book two is a lot of just message passing and character development. It feels kind of like a mushy middle to me. Um, but I think it's him transitioning into really solidifying his world, who these characters are, you know, who the main players are and, and what's going to happen to them and, and the, all the possibilities, right? He's, he's definitely laying a lot of groundwork, um, for, for the next books in the series. And there are six of them. So if he planned it that way, um, I could see where he's going with a lot of this stuff. A lot of, um, I really like the character Max he's got going on, who is an illegitimate son of, a of a, um, high lord something or other um and he's a you know he's a really good standard character the drinking boozer you know womanizing um you know i don't care about my life but why you know and um so he's got, he's got some really fun stuff with that uh the max character has a brother character who is the legitimate son who's a younger kid um they have a good relationship that i really like the way uh yeah, I really like the way that that's, that's panning out so far, especially in book three here. Because um, the cool part about it is in book three, that's when we get to see him, Tavi, join the Roman Legion, right? And actually learn to kick some butt. We get back into having some really fun battle scenes, um, you know, because that's what I'm into. And not, not homework. I don't like homework. Um, not even in my books. I don't be book no doing homework um so i really like uh where i'm at in book three um and where he continues with the story uh, i like how every book so far has had a two-year gap in it and so stuff has happened and um yeah i, I really like it uh his his relationship that he's got between uh the marat girl katai and tavi is super good um, I really like the Marat woman girl. It depends on where she's at in the book. She's 17 or 19, depending. Um, and yeah, I, great character. Um, the, the way he does even her, her voicing, right? Her, her lines in the story are very characteristic of her. You can tell without dialogue tags, without anything, what her lines are, you know, which, which, which ones to attribute to, to that character. And that's really fun for me. Um, I really like how they're progressing with the relationship for, um, Bernard and Amara. Um, that's really fun that the way he's had this Amara character who is what they call a cursor, who is basically, she's like a nun, right? But she works, she's like a battle nun. And, so she's this awesome spy who works for the king and has dedicated her entire life to him. And her discovery of herself is really, I, I just really like where he, he goes with this story um, and what he does with it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm enjoying this read. I really like it. I would highly recommend picking it up. My buddy suggested it to me. I liked it. I didn't really believe that Jim Butcher wrote a book with series about, you know, Pokemon cross Roman Legion. And, um, I like this Roman Legion part. I really like how they're doing it. I love how they're talking about, uh, the battles between, uh, 
the the Kane and the the Alarans. Um, I I mean they do a great thing where they turn an eagle uh, emblem into a black crow because it gets struck by lightning and all that. I mean it's really fun. Um, I love how he gets just super lore tastic in his writing. Um, and so go check it out. Codex Alera, second book, Academ's Fury. If you like that school schoolyard stuff, right, you know, where uh, Kavoth goes to school and learns to be a total badass and, 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 you know, this could be for you, right? This could really be fun. Um, especially if you're in that younger thing and you read the Harry Potters in that age range, right? And that sort of uh, genre and or trope really resonates with you. I did not. And so when I do this i'm like why why would i ever want to hear about anybody going to school this is not a ya like urban fantasy book right so not my thing book three however i'll be coming up with a review for that is good stuff tavi hits the roman legion stay tuned for that hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you watched thank you you guys have a great day go enjoy the sun or read a book